Yeah, hello there. I didn't see you. Unit 1 of Macroeconomics. Welcome back. It's March 16th, 2020. Toilet paper edition. We begin Unit 1 by looking at scarcity, the management of unlimited wants and needs, and scarce resources. We want it, but it isn't there. We're going to do this through looking at the production possibilities curve, which is this relationship between two objects and our ability to produce it. So usually there'll be a capital and a consumer good on one side, um, and if there's a point on the inside, it would be a misallocation of resources, we're just inefficient or in a recession. If the point's on the line, that would be at full employment, a, a, an optimal balance of frictional and structural employment. And then if the point is beyond in the frontier, that means it's not achievable. We can't do it given current, current technology or resources or capital. Shifters are pretty nicely correlated to the long-run aggregate supply line. So things which affect permanent economic growth would actually shift this line instead of moving the point alone. Technology, production, capital, and resources. Remember, capital is anything we use to make something that creates wealth. Uh, so a machine, or your knowledge, for example, would be human capital. Opportunity cost is this idea of trading, or we, or we use it to look to trade, uh, based on the value of the next best opportunity. We examine this through absolute advantage, which is this idea of which country actually, actually produces more, or comparative advantage, which country produces at the lowest opportunity cost. Remember, this analysis of trade and macro is usually just between two countries instead of 30 or 40, like in the real world, just to keep things kind of simple. Once you get a constant opportunity cost production possibility curve, you know it's constant because the lines are straight instead of bowed out, that would be increasing opportunity costs. I highly recommend you go and make the chart, put the countries on the left, the objects up top, and then you put the absolute advantage, the total production possibility numbers on the left side. And then in parentheses on the right, we calculate the opportunity costs. So for country A to produce one robot, we sacrifice one fourth of fly swatter. Conversely, country B to produce one robot, we give up two fly swatters. Nothing wild and crazy. The most spicy version of this question can be terms of trade. And to figure that out, you ask yourself, okay, if they want to know for one robot how many fly swatters would both countries accept, you go to the one robot category, and then you pick a number of fly swatters between this number and this number. So for example, in this scenario, both countries would accept for one robot one fly swatter, because one fly swatter is between one fourth and two. Awesome. Also in unit one is the basic supply and demand graph. So here we're looking to toilet paper because that's how we're rolling on, well, wow, that was a bad joke. On March 16th, 2020, the supply line is upward sloping because producers, sellers always want to supply objects at high prices. So the quantity supplied is very high at a high price. The quantity demanded is downward sloping because everybody wants cheap objects, so the number of people that demand low priced toilet paper is extremely high. The equilibrium point is this perfect nexus of people that want to sell a price, an object at that price, and people who want to buy it at that price. Common terms would be surplus, we have too much, shortage, we don't have enough, that's today by the way. And then finally, shifters are exactly like what you would expect. The more money you have, the more you're going to demand something. If you perceive you need it because you're going to be locked down in, you know, like your basement for like three months, <laughs> then the demand would rise as well. And then supply shifters would be input costs, uh, capital, labor, resources, the standard, you know, usual suspects. Hope you guys have a wonderful Monday, and uh, deuces?